hey guys welcome back so let's move a bit further and understand how uh, what is the code flow and the folder structure of mvc application so let's jump to visual studio and this is the application what we have created in our previous lecture now you can see a lot of uh, predefined folders are there the reason i have not created an empty application is uh, because i wanted you to understand what are these folders uh, and what is the use of the classes which are underneath these folders okay so let's go through these folders one by one so whenever you create an application we have the default uh, project here which is a mvc application of course and then we have the connected service part the properties part and differences part so these are common to all dotnet uh, applications right now we have the app underscore data uh, folder so uh, right now this folder is empty but if you need to have your uh, private components just like uh, xml files uh, mdf files or database files you can store uh, those files in here right so then we come to app underscore start this is uh, this uh, folder contains all the startup related classes okay so generally when the application is being called uh, let's skip this app start folder for now uh, we have global.asx file now this what does this global.asx file does is whenever we start the application the control of the application comes to this global.asx files first so i have put a debug point in here and let's try to up start the application one, uh, once okay so the moment it, uh, the application boots up uh, nothing comes onto the screen and the debug point has been hit so this is the application and uh, this application underscore start method is the first entry point of the application just like a main method in the program class of a console app okay so if you uh, see the code in application underscore start method we have register all areas this is uh, the first uh, thing this application does is basically it register all the areas now we will understand what are uh, areas in mvc a bit later but just for, uh, for now you just need to understand that uh, this is the uh, this uh, this code uh, registers the areas first then we have the global filters again the filters uh, concept will come in later then we have something very important which is called as register routes right and the register bundles now these two lines register config and uh, register uh, route config dot register routes and bundle config dot register bundles these two classes are present inside app underscore start uh, folder right this is a bundle config and route config and similarly the filter config also so all the application startup data means all the data that's being modeled into a class those classes are stored in the app underscore start folder but the entry point of the application is always global.asx file so let's stop the application and go through the further uh, folders so here comes the content folder now what is this content folder is basically whenever we create the application the application by default has some bootstrap files in it or the bootstrap is installed in the application right now what is a bootstrap again now bootstrap is a ui technology which is uh, which gives the application a very good look and feel so initially when uh, microsoft started with mvc2 and mvc3 there was no bootstrap means there was bootstrap but yes they didn't include that in by default in the uh, mvc applications uh, the reason uh, because of this reason the application were not so rich in ui part of it right but they have included these bootstrap classes now and because of these bootstrap classes uh, the application lo looks very rich in uh, ui part right now remember in uh, whenever when we in our previous lecture when we created this index class this was the jumbotron right uh, which we which i have shown in the previous lecture and then we had the button primd and then we have the button default right so button default looked as a, a transparent button and then button primd looked a very beautiful blue color of button right so this uh, this is possible with the bootstrap so these are the bootstrap classes so if we would have created a empty mvc application these bootstrap classes won't uh, would not have been present there but uh, since we have created the a full fledged mvc application uh, that means microsoft gives us a by default some bootstrap classes now if we have bootstrap installed in us so uh, in our application we also need the jquery installed in the application so by default we have this js files of the bootstrap also installed now the uh, the moment if we need js files we also need the jquery installed in the application so all these files of bootstrap and jquery these are not installed by us these are given by microsoft for our application right when we uh, when we will proceed in this uh, 
further uh, lectures we, i will under, uh, i will make you understand how we can customize some bootstrap classes okay now let's uh, move to some other folders now let's go to controllers folder so this is the folder which have all the controller now what is a controller again controller is the class which controls the mvc application that means it uh, takes the data from the model and gives uh, gives it to the view right again uh, I, I will be coming on to that uh, just uh, be with me for some time then we have the fonts if we need some fonts in our application yes we store those in here then we have the models again the data classes which are present uh, that should be present in the model so what do i need mean by model let's add a class in here i will just say it a uh, student class now a simple student class which has two properties it says string and name and then i'll copy this and make another property and it will be int age right now consider if we are making an application so this will be the model of our application right so let's uh, for now just understand that uh, the, all the models all the domain classes that those are present inside a model folder right okay so let's move further so scripts folders i have already explained you then we have the views folder right now if you consider uh, if you see it carefully we have the views folder and then we have a subfolder inside that is uh, that is called as a home folder right and then there is a shared folder now what is this home folder is basically the more and more controllers you will create the more and more folders will be present in here that uh, those uh, folders will contain the views specific to that controller so for example if i create a new controller i'll say a empty empty controller and then i will say it as a test controller okay so it's creating a test controller for me and just observe the view, uh, folders in here you see this is a test uh, controllers folder in here now if i say right click it and say it add as a view and i will say index view has been added so this index view where it will be added inside the test folder now again if you're uh, getting confused that how what i'm doing how uh, how i'm adding the new views and everything just for uh, just be with me for some time i will i'm just uh, explaining with the folder structures in here right so we have this views folder and then we have uh, something called a shared also right shared folder now what is this shared folder is again uh, i've shown you this layout uh, layout class uh, in my previous lecture right now this is the this layout is a uh, as i explained it earlier it is just like a master page in asp.net like uh, it will give me a common look and feel so all the views which are common or uh, all the shared views uh, that reside in the shared folder okay so that's it from the views folder then we have something called as favicon.ico file uh, this uh, favicon.ico file gives me the icon in the browser link okay so then we have the global asx files that we have already spoken then we have something called as package config now what is this package config is basically whatever package we have something called as bootstrap jquery jquery validation everything which comes with us uh, with our application uh, by default or we install some external packages those packages will be referenced in packages.config file okay then we have the traditional web config file which uh, in here we can uh, define the configuration of our web application so this is all about the folder structure of mvc application now let's uh, quickly uh, go into the controller part and let's understand how the code flows in this uh, mvc application right so i have already shown you that there is an index view then there is an about view and there is a contact view right let's run our application and let's see where we were right in our previous lecture so when we run it so yeah this is uh, this is the test page what i have created for showing you right so let's uh, go back to the home page okay so let me come to my home controller first and let me put a debug point in the index section okay so this index section is present in the home controller right so let's back come back to my view and let's press this dot net school right now before i uh, press that let me go to the layout page and you see this the dot net school link calls the index action of the home controller so whenever I will click on the .NET school link, that will uh, go to the debug point what I have put, right? So let me go back. 
let me go back to the view and let me click this dotnet school you see this it calls the index view of the home controller right now similarly if i put it uh, this to about view and let's go uh, continue this and click on about me it calls the about action right let me go to the uh, layout page again and you see this about calls the about action of the home controller so second parameter is uh, is the action third parameter is the controller now let's do one thing let's add a different action link uh, all together and let's create a new action and a new view so that you can understand it more carefully how do we do that right so first of all let me create a new action link in our navbar so i will just copy and paste and let me give it link to my new page right now i will create a action with the name of new page and that will be present in the home controller so let's go to home controller and i will just copy this contact view contact action and then i will paste it here right now i will just give it new page and with this i will just say new page right now if you are wondering what is view back and dot message here just don't wonder i will just explain you uh, once we get into the lecture right i will copy the jambutron and then i will go back i will click on uh, i will right click on this new page action and i will say add view right it gives me the name that new page i can select any name but i will just keep it new page right and then i will say add now once uh, this view is been added i will just uh, remove this part and i will add my jambotron right and i will edit this thing and i will say this is my new page right i will save it and i will run this application right from the start okay what i have done is basically i have created a link i have given it the controller and the action name i have created a new action and i have added a view right you see this link to my new page is here when i click it this is my new page so my new page is being visible to it so i hope you understood what what are the steps that we need to follow for creating a new view and creating a new action in the controller so in this lecture we understood what are uh, what is the folder structure of mvc application and how does a simple flow of uh, code occurs in the mvc application now what are controllers what is routing what are viewbacks stem data view data all these things i will cover in my next lectures okay so thank you so much for listening guys please do like share and uh, comment and until then please stay safe and stay at home thank you so very much